So we have kind of a what sort of a video here. Like, are these things for real? Like negative exponents? Seriously? Yeah, they, they exist and they're very relevant to what we're doing right now. So we're going to discuss in this introduction what negative exponents are. Like, what, what do they mean? How we define them? And then we're going to explore how all the operations you've learned in exponents, they still work. So it's not that hard. There's a couple things that we need to talk about. First is the definition. Secondly, how to appropriately use them. And, and third, when they apply and when they don't. Uh, and that's a big one because some people see negative exponents and they try to they try to make up their own math, frankly. And I want to make sure that you guys really understand what negative exponents mean so we can use them appropriately. So the first thing, how a negative exponent is defined. What a negative exponent means, and here's how I like to think about it, is that whatever's being raised to a negative exponent is on the wrong side of a fraction. So if it's on the top, numerator with a negative exponent, it really should be on the denominator. If it's on the denominator with a negative exponent, it really should be on the numerator. That little factor, that little piece with a negative exponent needs to move. And that's what this is saying to us. So this says, hey, uh, b to the negative n. How we define that, because b to the negative n right now can be viewed as being on the numerator of a fraction. We're saying that that's that's not right. So let's let's move this. Let's create another, let's create a fraction where we have that b, that, that little factor that's being raised to the negative n on the opposite side of that. So instead of b to the negative n, we can write this as 1 over b to the positive n. Here's the big thing I need you to know. Whenever you move a factor that has an exponent associated to it, and, and everything has an exponent. So whenever you move a factor from a numerator to a denominator or a denominator to a numerator, you change the sign of that exponent. That is the only thing I really need you to know, is that the sign of the number doesn't change. B is still B, that's fine. But when we moved it, when we moved it from a numerator to a denominator, the sign of the exponent changed. It was opposite, so negatives become positives, positives become negatives. That's what I need you to understand, is that when you move a factor, notice what I'm saying here, not terms. We can't move terms. Those are pieces added or subtracted. We can move factors. If we move factors from numerators to denominators or from denominators to numerators, the sign of the exponent changes. That's it. Uh, that's the rule of negative exponents. So if you keep that in mind, you can be just fine. Now we're going to practice a whole bunch of them, but we're not going to spend a whole lot of time doing it. Uh, we'll talk about some of the rules where negative exponents apply, and we'll do a lot of operations in about two videos from now. So let's let's try to let's try to clear all the negative exponents, and we'll determine when you can use them, or what factors get them, and what factors don't. So how about 9 to the negative 2? Notice how that negative 2 is right on top of that 9. It's being applied to that 9. Now, we don't, we don't like negative exponents. They're very hard to deal with. Now, sometimes we have them, and they're, they're useful in their own right, but we're much more comfortable using positive exponents. So generally, generally, one of the first things we do when we see negative exponents is change them. How? Well, the same definition. We're noticing that 9 to the negative 2, that's, that's not on the bottom of a fraction right now. If anything, if anything, it's on the numerator of a fraction. You can always write an expression as a fraction by writing it over 1. So we can do that. So how could we change it? On the same fashion, we go, well, hey, b to the negative n, we can write that, that factor on the opposite side of a fraction, so from top to bottom, and in doing that, we change the sign of our exponent. So instead of 9 to the negative 2, we could write this as 1 over 9 to the positive 2. Now notice what that does. Like immediately we go, well, 9 to the negative 2 is hard to think about, but if I write this as 1 over 9 to the second power, I wrote 9, that factor being raised to the negative exponent, on the denominator of fraction where it was not originally, and it changed the sign of the exponent only. Please understand, this is still an exponent rule, and exponent rules only apply to exponents. So if we're going to start moving around factors because of exponent rules, only the sign of the exponent can change, not the sign of the base, not the sign of the number here, of that factor, that has nothing to do with it. This is only applying to exponent rule. This is only applying to exponents because it's an exponent rule. Now, once we do that, that's a lot easier for us to understand. 9 to the second power is 81. So 9 to the negative second 
means 1 over 9 squared, but 9 squared is 81. So this expression really is 1 over 81. That's the way we can better understand what this negative exponent represents. You know, another thing is that we can do this, the same exact method with, with, uh, with variables. X to the negative third, that's not so great because, well, we have a hard time plugging numbers into that. We have negative exponents. It's kind of, kind of weird, kind of funky. So we're going to change that. This really is a fraction. It's X to the negative third over 1. What that's saying, anything with a negative exponent is saying, I'm on the wrong side of a, of a fraction. This factor that you have here is on the wrong side of a fraction. Right now, we can treat it on a, as a numerator. We could move it to the denominator of a fraction and then change the sign of our exponent. Anytime you move a factor, stuff that's multiplied, stuff that's divided, anytime you move a factor from where it is in a fraction, top to bottom or bottom to top, we change the sign. So instead of x to the negative third power, we can write 1 over x to the positive third power. In, change, in moving the factor, we change the sign. Now, question. Where the world's a 1 coming from? Because they're not really reciprocating. It, it, you, and a lot of people get confused on that. Well, you're just, I mean, if you wrote it as that over 1, aren't you just reciprocating? No, not really. You do have a fraction, so the denominator can be viewed as 1. But really what's going on, where that 1's coming from, we can always multiply a factor times 1 and not change the factor. Here's what I want you to view this as. Only the factors that actually have the negative exponents are influenced by the negative exponent. Only the factors with the negative exponent get to move. The other factors, some of the stuff you're going to see in a minute, they don't get affected, which means they don't move position. They're fine. So this is really like 1 times b to the negative n. Move the b to the negative n. Leave the 1. This is a huge part for you to understand for the next examples. Move the 9 to the negative second power. Leave the 1. Move the x to the negative third power. Leave the 1. That's where we get that 1 from. Now, we can also do the same thing with expressions, but here's the key. If you're going to move an entire expression to the denominator or to the numerator, the whole expression has to be in parentheses. You see, exponents don't distribute across addition or subtraction. Remember that? Exponent rules are one level below. So even with distribution, that's one level below. You can distribute exponents but only across multiplication and division. They don't distribute across addition and subtraction. But, man, we could, we could move this whole thing. In order to move an entire expression, the whole thing has to be raised to that negative exponent in order to move it from a numerator to denominator. So, well, what's in front? I mean, what number's in front? Does that negative 7 go to that 1? No. Negative exponents and exponents in general, they only affect the factor that they are immediately upon. They don't affect everything unless you have parentheses to distribute that. Now, we don't have parentheses here, so that negative 7, that can't go to that factor, whatever it is. It only affects that expression. So this is saying, hey, that, uh, that x minus y to the negative 7, that's in the wrong spot. Let's move it. Let's move it from where it is, like on a numerator, to a denominator right now. Remember, we could actually do this, too. We could make it a fraction. So right now it's on a numerator. You go, no, that's not so good. Let's move that. Notice how exponent rules, they only apply to exponents. They're not going to change anything about x minus y. They're just altering the sign of your exponent. That's it. On the numerator, you have 1. Why? That 1 right there. That's the 1. So I've been talking a little bit about this, um, how negative exponents only apply to the factor that they're immediately upon. They don't distribute unless you have parentheses across additions, uh, sorry, across multiplication and division. So we're putting a lot of ideas together right now. This is why people get sort of confused with it. Um, exponents distribute across multiplication and division. Well, what that means is that if there's no parentheses to distribute, that exponent can't go to every factor unless you have parentheses. This is a big deal because when you see something like 3x to the negative 1, like what I have here, well, 3, that a, a co coefficient next to a, a variable term or a variable part, that means multiplication. Here's the big idea. That negative exponent does not go to that 3. It can't, just like this. If that had been a positive 2, 
There's no way you're square in the three right now. In fact, think about it. What would you have to have in order for you to square the three? Well, you, you'd have to have parentheses. You'd have to have three x squared. Oh, oh, you'd have to have the whole entire expression raised to that power in order for you to distribute that exponent. So here, this is, there, I mean, if I said you get 9x squared here, you'd be like, what? It's crazy. Exactly, exactly, because exponents only apply to the immediate factor that they're upon unless parentheses tell you you have to distribute across multiplication. That's what this does. There's two different problems here. Well, that's the same exact logic with negative exponents. These are also two different problems. If exponents only apply to the factor they're immediately upon, then that negative 1 is only applying to the x. It is not applying to the 3. This negative 1 would be to both the 3 and the x. There's a difference there. I hope you see that difference. Because this one says, yes, you can distribute exponents across multiplication, which we have here, and we've been practicing that in some of our exponent rules. Uh, but this one you don't. There's no distribution. There's no parentheses. Therefore, there can't be any distribution for us. That means that that negative exponent only applies to that factor. So let's extrapolate what we've learned so far. We've learned that we can move factors from numerators to denominators, or, or denominators to numerators. We haven't done that yet. By changing the sign of your exponent. Not the sign of the number, not the sign of the number, not the sign of the variable, not the sign of this expression, not the sign of whatever we're going to do here, but the sign of the exponent. We also know that exponents only apply to immediate factors, so numbers out front go on the numerators. So this says, uh, you know what, uh, this guy right here, that's not in the right spot. That's got a negative exponent. That needs to move to the denominator of a fraction. And thereby moving it to the denominator, we change the sign of our exponent. However, this expression, that factor, that doesn't have a negative exponent. That's appropriate. That's in the great spot. So that's going to remain on our numerator. If you can get that idea down, you have it. You win at life. Okay, you got it. So the, the exponent only applies to immediate factor. If we have parentheses, yes, then we start applying that. But if you don't have parentheses to distribute, that exponent cannot go to other factors. That means that those factors may or may not have negative exponents. This 3, man, what is that exponent, actually? Well, if you really thought about it, it's got an exponent of 1. Remember how we can give every factor an exponent? F oh, every factor gets an exponent. That means that that exponent can't count for both of them. It's impossible. So this 3 has a positive 1. Leave it where it is. That's fine. That's exactly where it's supposed to be. This, this 3 has an exponent of 1. This variable, this x, has an exponent of negative 1. It's saying that particular factor, that 1, that's not so hot. Let's move that one. And that's exactly what these exponents do. Exponents only apply to immediate factors. If we have distribution, then yes, we do get to distribute them. And then after that, we move the factors that have negative exponents. That is it. Let's try the next one. If we look at 5xy to the negative first, uh, well, one good one good idea is to show the multiplication. Because when you show multiplication, you show your factors. We have one, two, three factors. Notice we're not talking terms now. That, that's polynomials. There's no polynomials on the board besides that one. And that's one expression we couldn't do anything with. But here, well, we have three factors. Every one of those factors has an exponent, whether it's shown or not. If it doesn't have an exponent, you can give it one. Now, what factors have negative exponents? Because the answer to that question is the answer to what am I supposed to move? Do I move the 5? Right now, this can all be viewed as a numerator. Do I move the 5? Well, of course not. It's got a positive exponent. That negative 1 doesn't apply to that. Do I move the x? Well, no, that, that also says I'm in the right spot. I got a positive 1, I'm good to go. That negative 1 does not apply to the x. How about the y? Yes. That's the factor that has that negative exponent. So we're going to leave the 5 and the x, and we're going to move y to the negative 1 to a denominator because that, that exponent signals us saying, hey, this particular factor, that's in the wrong spot on a fraction. That should be not on the top, not on the numerator, but on the denominator. I'm hoping this is making sense to you. We've got a couple more to practice, but this is the, the whole meat of the, the idea. Negative exponents for like a 30-second recap. Negative exponents mean I'm on the wrong side of a fraction. Move me. 
Now, it's factor specific. So whatever factors have negative exponents is what you move. Notice how with polynomials, this kind of, we don't, we can't really deal with it. Uh, in fact, when we, dis, when we talked about polynomials and defined them, we can't even have negative exponents because there's, there's nothing to do on a polynomial level. It's, it's one term specific. These monomials is how we're, we're distinguishing our, our negative exponents. So what we do with them is we put them on the opposite side of a, a fraction from where they're at. It only affects individual factors, doesn't affect the whole thing. Now, if we have parentheses and distribute, then okay, but not right off the bat. So when we get down to multi-factor monomials, multi-factor terms, we look at the terms, uh, we look at the, sorry, we look at the factors kind of independently. We say what factors have negative exponents and we move just those factors. That's pretty much it. Now, the next thing I want to talk about, <clears throat> well, do the exponent rules still work? And thankfully, the answer is yeah. So when we have, well, 4 to the negative 1 times 4 to the negative 3, could we start moving things around? Yes, yes we could. And, and in fact, you're going to find this out. As we go through it, you might be thinking, man, I see a completely different way to do this problem. That's true. And you know what? It's okay. As long as you're not breaking any of the rules that I'm giving you, man, there's lots of ways to do this stuff. I'm just showing you some of the, the most efficient ways and some other ways for you to think about, really. So 4 to the negative 1 times 4 to the negative, negative 3, what do we see? Oh man, we're going back to exponent rules. We see the level of multiplication. What we do with exponents, regardless of what they are, is one level below what we see. So if we see multiplication, we should be adding our exponents. Let's see, negative 1, negative 1 plus negative 3. Not negative 1 minus 3. Negative 1 plus negative 3. Well, that's negative 4. Now, does it 4 to the negative 4th actually look good? Heck no. It's saying that factor is on the wrong side of a fraction. Let's move it. Let's move it to a denominator. So instead of 4 to the negative 1 times 4 to the negative 3, which is really confusing to think about, we have uh, 4 to the negative 4, which still isn't so hot, but as soon as you move it down to a denominator, now it changes the sign, not of the number, the 4 doesn't change, but that exponent of 4 does change signs. Now we have 1 over 4 to the 4th, and you figure what whatever that is. Um, so 1 over 256. Now, does that make sense as far as moving each of these? It does. You see, if you have 4 to the negative 1, you can think about that as 1 fourth. If you have 4 to the negative third, 1 over 4 to the positive third power, that's 1 fourth times 1 over 64, that's 1 over 256, exactly like that is. So the, the exponent rules we've learned, they still work. Sometimes they're, it's nice to move negative exponents first, Sometimes it's not, and so it really depends on the problem, which is why there's multiple ways to do some of these. But anyway, I want to make sure that you understand the, the rules still work. Uh, let's look at the next one. So x to the negative seventh power times x to the second power. Could we move exponents right now? Of course. Uh, do exponent rules still work? They do. So when we have, oh, well, see multiplication, one level below that is addition. We can still add exponents when we see multiplication. We would get x to the negative fifth power. Negative 7 plus 2 is negative 5. Now, next question, should we leave it? Rarely. We rarely leave things in negative exponents. Yeah, as we move forward, there's a couple cases where we do, but most of the time, we really prefer our answers to be in positive exponents. So we take a moment, go x to the negative fifth. Can I change that? Well, let's see how many factors are there. Uh, well, there's only one factor that's not 1. You could put 1 times x to the negative fifth. That's true. But that x is the only thing that has a negative exponent. Right now, it can be viewed as being on a numerator. There's no fractions, so it's implied to be on a numerator right now. 1 you can leave, but that factor of the negative 5, let's move that. Let's say, hey, it's on the wrong side of a fraction. Let's move it from the top to the bottom and thereby change the sign of our exponent. That's the idea. You know what? We see another exponent rule right there. 
So when we have exponents raised to exponents, now we're on a different level. So we see exponents. One level below exponents is, well, it's multiplication. So we can still multiply these exponents even if they're negative and get things like x to the negative sixth power. Not a problem. What I'm trying to show you in the video is, besides the fact that these things exist and look really weird, frankly, um, there's really only two things we need to understand besides that. Uh, number one, those negative exponents only apply to the factors that they're immediately upon, that x, that y. That's it. The other thing is that the exponent rules that you've learned already, don't forget them. They still apply, and that's fine. I'm not trying to alter what you already know. I'm just trying to add to it a little bit. Now, would you leave that? Would you leave that as x to the negative sixth? You go, no, it looks pretty funky. Um, you don't really have to write the one like I've been doing. I just wanted to explain where that comes from. So when you write a fraction, well, if I'm going to move that factor, what's left on the top? Nothing? Well, there's always a one. So you can still write that one. <clears throat> x to the negative sixth, that, that factor doesn't look so good. I don't like that it's negative. So we can move that individual factor by moving it from a numerator to a denominator, we change the sign of that exponent. Last one, we've been talking a whole long time about this. Like, well, why doesn't that negative go to the, the 3? Well, it, it can't. It, it can't because there, there's no way to distribute across multiplication unless you have parentheses. So in this case, negative exponents only apply to the immediate factors thereupon. Well, that's what these parentheses are telling you. They're saying, hey, can we distribute exponents? Yes. What can we distribute exponents across? We can always distribute one level below what we have. So we distribute multiplication across addition and subtraction. We distribute exponents across multiplication and division. That's fine. Even negative exponents do that. While we can't distribute across addition and subtraction, we can and must distribute across multiplication. This is how we let exponents apply to more than one factor. It's only through distribution. Exponents can't apply uh, to more than one factor if there's no parentheses. It says, what, what's that exponent on? Just the x. How about that one? Just the 3. How about that one? Just the y. Just the x. Just the 5. How about that one? Oh, I need it on both of them. So that's when we start applying the negative exponents to more than one factor. It is only if we have parentheses. I hope that's very clear to you. That negative 1, only to the x. That negative 4, because we can distribute across multiplication. Because we know how to do that through multiplication of exponents. This is how exponents apply to more than one factor, is through that distribution. So 1 times negative 4, x to the negative 4. That's fine. I'm going to show multiplication because I really like to see the different factors that we have to make sure that I'm not accidentally letting one factor become negative when it shouldn't be or moving one factor when another factor is negative. I want to make sure that I'm really seeing the products. So we see distribution of exponents, no problem. It's going to go to every single factor inside that parentheses. That's, that's cool. That's awesome. So now we have x to the negative fourth power and we have y to the negative fourth power. Every single factor that's negative, or sorry, every single factor that has a negative exponent should move. It should go to the different side of the fraction that it's on. So x to the negative, whoa, that means both the x and the y have to move. What's left? Well, the same thing that's left on a lot of these problems. If you move every factor from where it is, then what's left is 1. So we have 1 on the numerator, both x to the negative fourth power, becoming x to the fourth, and y to the negative fourth power, becoming y to the fourth, those both move to the denominator. So every single factor, they, they kind of work independently of one another through multiplication. We look at every factor, we determine the value of its exponent. If it's positive, it stays where it's at. If it's negative, you move it. And we do that on a case-by-case -case basis for every single factor. That's really it. Move things around until you get positive exponents and you're, you're fine. That's our final answer. That's as good as we can get. Now, um, oh, what if you saw it different? What if you said, well, wait a minute, didn't you, you just moved that whole thing. Why don't, why don't we just move the whole thing? You totally can. So if you saw this and said, well, before you told me I could, I could do this, why aren't you?
can can you do that? Can you leave the one? Can you move this entire expression to the denominator and have it x times y to the positive fourth? Absolutely. Absolutely you can. Furthermore, does that exponent distribute across multiplication? It sure does. And you get exactly the same thing, which means there's more than one way to do this, and that's fine. Both of these are appropriate. They both involve valid exponent rules. You can't get it wrong as long as you're following the rules. Man, I wish I could see if you guys understood that. I hope that it, I hope it make it, it's making sense to you, how negative exponents apply. Now, the last one looks pretty complicated, but let's just go through it. Let's make sure we're using the exponent rules proper, properly. I know that I have a product, but I also know that exponents can distribute across multiplication. So we're going to let that happen. Whether we have positive exponents or negative exponents, exponent rules apply. So I'm seeing exponents right here, which means I'm going to be multiplying. One level below is multiplication. I also know that exponents, when we distribute, they distribute across multiplication. So that gives us x to the fourth power, negative, and y to the second power, but negative. 4 times negative 2, remember those exponent rules? 4 times, sorry, 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. Not a problem. That still works. It's just now we have to remember to multiply by negatives. Times, times. No problem. Next up, positive exponents also distribute. All exponents distribute across multiplication, division, and not addition, subtraction. So when we take our exponents and multiply them, because we're seeing exponents, we multiply, and we let them apply to every factor inside through distribution, we're just basically multiplying numbers. 2 times negative 2, negative 4. 1 times negative 2, negative 2. 1 times 2, 2. And negative 1 times 2, negative 2. Let's make sure. That looks good. That looks good. 2 times 2. Okay, and negative 2. One times two. Looks good. Huh. Could you move the negative exponents now? Absolutely. You certainly could. Could you use um, the addition of exponents rule now? Yes. That's what I'm going to do. I prefer that. But there's lots of ways to do it. No way is technically wrong. Uh, what I do want you to do is not make the mistake of accidentally multiplying or adding when you should be doing the reverse of that. Um, and not just giving up on negative exponents. They're really not that hard if we know our exponent rules, and I think that you do. So let's look at what we can, well, let's look at what we can do. This is all multiplication, which means, wow, the order in which I multiply doesn't matter, so all I really am looking for is some common basis. I see x to the negative fourth, I see x to the second. It's being multiplied, so I'm thinking in my head, I'm thinking, okay, one level below multiplication is addition, so I'm gonna be adding exponents. Even if it's negative 4 and 2, just like we had negative 1 and negative 3, I can add those. So that's going to give us x to the negative 2. Here's multiplication. What I do is one level below what I see. So I'm going to add the exponents. Negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2. But I'm also going to get y to the, well, again, let's, let's add those exponents. Negative 2 plus negative 2 is negative 4. So we... Let the exponent distribute across multiplication. We've used the appropriate multiplication of exponents rule. Now we're using the appropriate addition of exponents rule. Negative 2 and negative 4. Now, what's going to be on the numerator when I move the factors that have negative exponents? It's whatever number's in front. Here, that's 1. I move both my x, creating a positive exponent. I also move my y, creating a positive exponent. Done. That's as good as we can get. And that's how we appropriately kind of cope with having these negative exponents that look really weird at first. But hopefully through this video, you saw they're really not that bad. Um, yeah, they can, they can screw you up for sure. Um, what typically happens is people move them when they shouldn't uh, or try to do too much at one time. Um, of course, dealing with negatives, we get the sign errors uh, that, that pop up from, uh, from time to time. Uh, but hopefully you understand that they're... They're not intimidating. Uh, hopefully they're not intimidating to you. You can certainly handle them, and if you've been keeping up with the videos, you're going to do great at it. Uh, next time, what we're going to talk about is some operations with them. Uh, so we'll, we'll talk about like the quotient rule. How, I, I've been saying uh, what you do is one level below what you see all the time. Well, we've seen exponents, so we multiply. We've seen multiplication, so we add. 
We haven't ever dealt with division. So we're going to deal with that, and now we can because we know about negative exponents.